So, dude, speaking of ashes, did you see the trailer for this uh, ridiculous new movie about Judith Miller? Uh, actually, I have. You know, uh, Judy Miller, of course, she was the reporter for the New York Times, the one who broke the story that there are weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. That was actually quoted, both fed from the office of vice president to her, leaked to her, and then quoted uh, by Dick Cheney on Meet the Press to prove that even the New York Times says this is real. Full circle. Uh, and she, of course, was one of the key figures in protecting Scooter Libby because of the Aspen's growing truths or something to that effect. Yeah, the poetry. Uh, did, did you find, do you think that they slept together? Oh, God, I hate to think so, but it's, I, I mean. I feel, I feel like they did. I mean, either way, it's nothing's, it's, it's all reprehensible. She was involved in, in helping the Bush administration cover up the fact that they uh, outed a, a CIA agent. And so what's this, what's uh, this now there's this about? movie, Nothing But the Truth, where Judith Miller is played by, if you can believe it, Kate Beckinsale, um, oh. who I wasn't really familiar with, but apparently she's very young and attractive. And what makes this movie even more reprehensible is that in addition to aggrandizing Judith Miller, who... Um, you know, it's one thing to, 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 to tout the First Amendment. It's another to use Judith Miller, which is probably the worst case in which to uh, tout this. But it also sort of fictionalizes it, even though it's based on Judith Miller, and fictionalizes it by making a villain out of the next country the Bush administration probably would have wanted to attack, Venezuela, as if they would be a mortal threat to us. But here, here's the clip now. They want your source, right? I won't give it to them. Are you sure you want to get in a war with the government? God, this is so crazy. And if you want to waltz into a courtroom in a martyr's cloak, trust me, you're going to see a wave of self-righteous indignation that you can't even begin to imagine. I hold you in contempt of court, and I remand you to the custody of the United States Marshal. As soon as you're prepared to speak, you will be released. Can I have a minute with my client? It feels like his only real target is Rachel Armstrong for publishing the article. I'm going to be okay, sweetie. Weather's changed, Rachel. If we back down, what are we saying, Albert? I'm defending Rachel Armstrong, not a principal. Wow, dude! I'm defending even... Rachel Armstrong, did not a principal. That... Someone did fictionally even... fictionalized. To even think that Matt that Matt Dillon or uh, is that his name Matt Dillon could construct a sentence like the one that came out of his mouth in that trailer as being plausible is ridiculous. That looks like a TV movie. That looks ridiculous. Uh, at, and Rachel Armstrong, what an innocuous name. That What a sort of like an odd name for that. It's Rachel like Armstrong. A, in Venezuela, why? They didn't want to go anywhere near an, uh, uh, a Muslim country in this movie? I mean, it looks ridiculous. Well, they want to pick the next. Uh, they're basically, it's, it, this is like a, like a threefer. It's, it's one, it's sort of scrubbing the record of uh, Judith Miller. Uh, two, it's scrubbing the whole record of the Bush administration involved in this whole thing. And three is it's it's helping them villainize uh, Venezuela. Oh, but uh, now, you know, this isn't. Uh, are you saying the, that are you saying, Sam, that this movie may be a trial balloon uh, for a possible attack on Venezuela? Yeah, I, I haven't seen the full list of credits yet, but I, I'm not convinced that Scooter Libby wasn't an advisor for this film. Uh, but. <laughs> But just in case you had any wonder, even though the, the director is trying to play this off, like this, you know, it slightly has to do with Judith Miller, but it's really about the F Fourth Amendment. Uh, apparently, uh, this is one of the uh, quotes from the people at the movie, uh, the premiere of the movie. Lucy Danzinger, editor of Self Magazine, said, of course, we celebrate Judith Miller and honor her. Director Rod Lurie talked about the heroes of the First Amendment. Now, this, of course, is just bullshit. If you want to do a, 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 a movie about the heroes of the First Amendment, there are any number of guys you could pick uh, to, to highlight. This, this you, is, it, it, it's this a is horrible, a, horrible but, revisionism. Yeah, it's revisionism and, and it's, uh, it's celebrating a, a, a fucking pawn, a, a, a whore of the administration. And Kate Beckinsale? I mean, there are a lot of people who could have played Judith Miller. Don't you think about it? Yeah, that? hell yeah. Yeah, I definitely like. Uh, well, that, look at that. I mean, I would think someone like Lee Grant maybe would be better. Um, That's Judith Miller, Judith Miller, and Lynn Cheney. Uh, the, of course, the middle one is 
Judith Miller, the Hollywood it's version. Just like of Judith Lee Miller. Grant looks like her, actually. Let's see. Let's see. There's Lee Grant. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. That, uh, Lee Grant looks exactly like her. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Except like her face seems stretched. Somehow. Something looks a little unfortunate there with Lee Grant. Stretch, stretch, uh, stretch Cloris stretch Leachman. Stretched like a canvas over her skull. Cloris Leachman. She could have played. Not bad. It. Actually, Cloris Leachman looks good there. I mean, it'd have to be sort of the one from like uh, that um, that Mel Brooks movie. <laughs> but Cloris Leachman is like 100 years old. Uh, how about uh, Javier Bardem uh, with his, uh, you know, but has to be with the, yeah, with the No Country for Old Men hairstyle. I think that'd be the way to go. <laughs> yes, that would be good. I mean, at least then you'd be you'd be basically signaling to the audience like this is really really fictional. <laughs> He's played uh, Judith Miller is played by Javier Bardem. Uh, this is really we've taken a lot of liberties. You know what I can uh, tell you, Sam? What's no that? one's going to see this fucking movie. Uh, just by you know, it's one of those movies where you even look at just the cast, where you look at like you know uh, Beckinsdale. What's that guy's name? Noah Wiley. Is that his name? Uh, oh, is it from ER you know, or something Dillon. like that? Huh? ER? Yeah. I, it's just one of those movies that reeks of, uh, and I'm not going to, I don't think so. I, well, I don't know who the it. audience is for this, but it is something that, you know, it just it's going to self-satisfy uh, a lot of people on the right. And, uh, you know, one more step in rehabbing Judith Miller's uh, career where she really, if anything, you know, it's like basically should trumpet the fact that she, she had every right to publish those leaks from the Bush administration about the lies of uh, the reason why we're going into Iraq. Uh, and, uh, you know, she, you, should, you should trumpet that. But yeah, she wasn't protecting the, her, her right to, to, uh, to, to, not, to not be forced to talk. She was protecting the administration. Exactly. And, you know, this, uh, this movie, uh, Nothing But the Truth, supposedly about Judith Miller, has basically created an amazing trend now of revisionist historical movies uh, that are apparently coming out next year. Uh, take a look at the poster for this one, okay? There it is. Tom Hanks in The Man Who Won Iraq, the Paul Wolfowitz story. I mean, this, to me, seems like completely revisionist. I mean, it's probably yeah, I think so, as accurate. Just a little bit. It's, it's probably yeah. as accurate as the uh, Judith Miller, uh, nothing but the truth. But uh, I don't know. Well, know one, that's what happens. One, yeah, that one just, of these movies come the one out, that just, and they just I'm keep having, producing. Uh, we're, we're talking over each other a little bit. I can't. It's like when you talk, it's cutting out a little bit. And when I talk, I think it's cutting out over there. But I, this one, uh, this is the one that I find really frightening, Sam, because it's so quick that they're on top of this, that the movie industry apparently is doing quite well. But Russell Crowe. Is apparently starring in the Bogoyevich, the Bogoyevich Man of the People, and listen to this tagline: "He cut through the bureaucracy, and they hated him for it." That is an That's amazingly pretty... quick turnaround for that. But yeah, also... because it's not even over. We don't even know how that movie's going to end. For Christ's sake, it's it's just amazing how quickly these ideas are sold and and just put out there. I mean, I'm, I'm imagining Bogoyevich got a little money for that. I would think so. And and who's the they? Yeah, the, the, the they, there's many days, but we all know who the real they is. All right, and this one is, is the absolute height of revisionism. Uh, this is the, the project for a new American century. <clears throat> Apparently, you know, now that they're uh, going to be out of power, uh, at least in the administration, have started a films division now. Here's their first feature, which I guess is set to be released in the middle of 2009. Great start. America's busting out all over. And it's starring the cast of High School Musical. I guess this is also a musical uh, that, you know, aims to re-educate the youth of this country as to the success of the project for a new America century. A uh, new American century. Uh, uh, that'll be fun. A lot of singing in terms of how we can do uh, preemptive warfare wherever we want and completely take over the world militarily by being imperialist dogs. I the, think that's a big closing musical number. It's called Imperialist Dogs. And a lot of the cast is dressed as dogs, and there's dancing, and a Dick Cheney comes out uh, in a big suit, singing proudly. We are the imperialist dogs. 